Hi folks, welcome to my green instructable. I'm going to show you how to make a digital thermostat for a through wall HVAC unit. I live in New York City and according to CB Richard Ellis, uh, New York City really is a renter's market. About one third of the population own their home, uh, which compares to about 70% for the rest of the US. So what that means is that there are about five million people in New York City alone who live in rental apartments or rental homes. Um, it's very rare for any of these apartments to have uh, a type of central or forced air system which would be thermostatically controlled. So what we've got are a lot of what you're looking at right here, which are through wall HVAC units. Some of them are newer, some of them are dated, but one thing that is common is that many of them either look like this or, more importantly, have this type of a control panel here. Let me just zoom in on that. So here is our typical uh, HVAC through wall control panel. Um, these units work great, but unfortunately they have no way of regulating the actual temperature based on um, like a thermostat would. They have no way to tell you if it's cold or hot and to turn on or off the appropriate air conditioning or heat. So my inspiration for this project was figuring out a way to balance a, a green initiative uh, as well as something that would save money as well as something which would net net result in a more comfortable and more appropriately uh, temperature controlled apartment. So I thought let's figure out a way to use a couple of servo motors and an Arduino to control this uh, switch here, this control panel. Now there are some compromises that have to take place here to keep this simple and one of which is that we really only need to control three out of these five buttons. We need to be able to control the unit or turn it off, we need to be able to turn it on cool, and we need to be able to turn it on heat. Um, the other interesting thing is that this unit, like many, has a potentiometer that alternates between warmer and cooler. My experience is that many of these either don't work or don't do much at all, and in fact, uh, I ignore that. One functionality, which I'll discuss towards the end of the project, is adding um, more cool features to this, but in the interest of keeping it simple and accomplishing our green initiative of being able to regulate this, um, I'm going to keep it to just these three buttons, off, low, cool, and heat. All right, so what do we need to make this? First, I'm going to start off with some of the hardware. This would You can pick this stuff up at your local hardware store, like a Home Depot, or if you so are inclined, you can order online. I tend to order a lot of my stuff either from Amazon.com or uh, if you're looking for more of an industrial supplier, you can definitely use a company called Enco. Their website is use-enco.com. Uh, the first thing here, I have six of these one-half inch by uh, one or one half inch long, eight by 32 thread screws, or these are called socket head cap screws. Um, and then I have two that are one inch long. I'll show you here in a second. You do not need to use the exact same things I'm using, but I wanted to. Do, I did want to be explicit about how I did it, so that if you'd like to follow along, you can. Um, so six six one half inch, one two one inch long screws, and then we've got a piece of aluminum here. This is four inches long by one inch thick, or excuse me, one inch wide and a quarter inch thick. And then I've got two pieces here of aluminum which are one inch long and a quarter inch uh, square. So that's the hardware. And then on the electronic side, I've got two hobby servos. You can purchase these from a place like SparkFun. They're about $12 each. And these provide plenty of torque. This particular model is the high-tech HS-311. I think it has about 40 uh, kilograms of um, torque. And then I'm using an Arduino. I've got a Lady Ada Proto Shield, although you do not need to use this. It will be helpful to have the breadboard I've got, but you do not have to have this Proto Shield. Um, so Arduino and Proto Shield. And then lastly, you need a uh, 9 volt power supply. You can purchase these also from a company like SparkFun or, um, or you can purchase them at Radio Shack. That this is the power of the Arduino. And then lastly, we need our temperature probe. It's this little guy right here. And I purchased this from SparkFun. You can see the part number on the instructable page, but it is um, SEN-00245. And it is about, I think, $4.25.
by way of background, I happen to enjoy uh, doing metalworking, but I wanted to keep this project simple and, and doable for anyone, so I limited myself to a couple of tools. One, a regular old hacksaw. Two is a power drill, and this has a number 29 drill bit in it. And along with that number 29 drill bit, I use a an 8x32 tap and a tap handle. You can purchase this tap and that drill bit um, also at your hardware store, or if you don't want to do that, or excuse me, um, all you need to do is purchase whatever tap matches the screws that you're using. I'm using 8x32 screws, so I bought an 8x32 tap. Once again, the links and information is on the Instructables website. Before I show you uh, exactly how I made the parts, there are the metal aluminum parts, I wanted to show you the piece assembled so you can get an idea of what exactly is going on here. Um, I chose to remove my tag here because it was flimsy and just in the way. If you'd like to leave it in, you probably can. I just thought it was easier to take that off. It just lifted right off. And so here is the assembled part. You can see this is the piece of aluminum strip down at the bottom, and I've got my two uh, posts on the end, and I've attached my servo motors. So here's what I did, did for the design. Once again, trying to keep this as simple as possible. I've got two ridges underneath here which the posts slide uh, under. I line up my piece right there. If you remember the red button was the heat, this light blue was the cold, and this is the off, so that's the sort of position. So I just set this down and slide it under. I get it lined up and then all I've got to do is turn those screws which tightens the unit in place. This guy's a little tight. You can finger tighten it and it should work. And there we go. Nice and solid in place. Since it's really hard to see what exactly I was doing, um, here's another example. What I'm doing is I'm sliding the piece underneath uh, these the two ridges that I have got in the HVAC unit, and I'm using these two one-inch long screws as sort of set screws to pinch the thing or the uh, servo mount into place. So as you can see, what's happening is I turn um, these screws; they will pinch, they raise the uh, side bars of aluminum up so that they're pinching that mount and it doesn't take a lot of force but um, and it also doesn't you know cause any damage and allows the unit to be easily removable um, and, and just holds it in place. I also want to emphasize this isn't the prettiest looking part but um, like I said I wanted to make this a project that I think is doable uh, with someone who doesn't have a lot of experience or a lot of access to tools and by using this uh, set screw sort of system here, you can lock the unit in place and it'll stay where it needs to stay, but it's also easily removable and won't leave any permanent marks on your unit. I think this is also a good time just to mention uh, something about safety, which is uh, one reason why I like this project a lot is that we're using these servos to control the buttons, which are already um, there to do their job. Uh, an alternative way to do this would be to try to tap into the electrical box of this unit and uh, that's, I think, just a, a very dangerous proposition. You are potentially dealing with high voltage. There's certainly the risk that you could set something on fire, um, not to mention, you know, in a renter's unit, you would very likely be charged by your landlord if you didn't restore it uh, at the time you left. Plus, the cool thing about this is that when you're done with it, you can take it out and you can move it to your next apartment or uh, tweak it as you need to.